Hi, I'm Erin Lundy. And I'm Madeline Walden, and this is Aquarium, Aquarium of the Pacific, a podcast brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, Southern California's largest aquarium. Join us as we learn alongside the experts in animal care, conservation, and more. Welcome back to Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm Erin Lundy, Conservation Coordinator for Mammals and Birds and Animal Care Specialist. And I'm Madeline Walden, the Aquarium's Digital Content and Community Manager. Today we are learning all about diving at the aquarium. Erin, have you ever dove at the aquarium before? Yeah. (laughs) It historically was part of my job. Mm -hmm. Um, Not as much recently. The frog habitats tend not to be... You don't have to dive in the frog habitats. (laughs) They tend not to be deep (laughs) enough to need that. Um, But when I was primarily a marine mammal carekeeper, Mm -hmm. caretaker caregiver my goodness uh, a mammologist yeah when i was a mammologist <laughs> and i primarily took mm-hmm. care of our marine mammal collection um one of the things that people don't realize is that diving is how we clean their house yeah and we have a vacuum like an underwater vacuum mm-hmm. for vacuuming up all the things that are that would be <laughs> that would needed be. to be vacuumed <laughs> food goes in food comes out yeah mm-hmm. um and the best thing about diving in with our seals and sea lions other than getting a chance to see how massive they look underwater is sometimes you get to find their little whiskers, and it's really oh, cute. Oh! They have really cute whiskers. That is precious. Um, harbor seal whiskers, when you find them, are different than mm-hmm. California sea lion whiskers. California sea lion whiskers look like a, a spaghetti, like a dry mm-hmm. spaghetti. But harbor seal whiskers are the cutest things ever because they have this spiral structure all oh, around, cute. and that makes them more sensitive to water currents flowing yeah. over them and helps them understand their surroundings. So that's the best part about diving in with the seals and sea lions. But Treasure. Yeah, all the treasure you find in, <laughs> within the poop. That's awesome. Well, I am currently in the process of learning how to scuba dive, and I'm really excited to get into our exhibits because it just it seems so magical. I can't wait. I haven't been in a lot of our exhibits. Mm-hmm. I've been in our sea otter habitat. I've been in penguins. I've been in our seals and sea lions. But um, our DSO, Rachel, gets to do all of it and mm-hmm. then some, mm-hmm. and then also gets to teach people how to dive in all of those different yeah. habitats. So... Madeline's scuba certification is going to allow us to do TikToks from mm-hmm. inside and see wait. fish real I'm up so close excited. and personal. I can't wait. Rachel is our dive safety officer, also known as a DSO. And she's worked at the aquarium for quite some time. And we're very lucky to have her. It is not easy diving. Diving is no, super technical, can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. So much safety protocols that she has to manage and, and really be thinking about the entire time that she's working. And probably when she's not working, honestly. <laughs> Who doesn't think a about lot of brain space when they're mm-hmm. not working? But she is wonderful and she is one of the most enthusiastic and sweet mm-hmm. DSOs that we could ever ask for. So um, without further ado, let's have Rachel on. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Hi. Good afternoon. So happy to be here. Yay. Can you tell us a little bit about your job here at the aquarium? How long have you been here? Yeah. What do you do? So um, I am the dive safety officer of aquarium operations. I have been here for about 11 and a half years. Wow. wow. Really? Yes. Yeah. So um, awesome. I started when I was 20 years old, and I remember getting the call uh, that I got the job, and I laid back on my bed, and I thought all of my worries that I've ever had in my life were solved because <laughs> I got a job in scuba diving, which is kind of a hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a luxury sport. It's mm-hmm. super fun. You know, everybody wants to, you know, scuba dive at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Yeah. Get paid so, to do it. Even. <laughs> yeah. You know, and get that's paid awesome. to do it. And mm-hmm. so, and so that's that's what um, that's what I do, um, but more so actually, I manage all the people that are diving at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I don't actually get in the water as much as I would like to, but I certainly do get in to do some trainings or to um, to do some fun stuff or some special events. But mainly, what I'm in charge of is making sure that the dive program is um, being conducted in a safe manner, that all of the equipment is safe and in good condition and looks nice and pretty. Um, and I onboard all of the volunteer scuba divers and manage all of the diving that goes on day to day in the exhibits. Um, I'm one of a team of six people that are all paid employees and everybody else that you see that's diving in the exhibits. Um, they either staff members and aquarists or volunteers. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about your career or just your life before the aquarium. Have How long have you been diving for? 
So um, I'm super lucky. I grew up locally here. I grew up like in Seal Beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad got me into scuba diving right when I turned 12 years old, which is the absolute (laughs) youngest you can possibly be. I knew that I wanted to breathe underwater ever since I had a mermaid Barbie. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and scuba diver Barbie in the bathtub or what have you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I was, um, I grew up going to Catalina with my family um, and snorkeling in that super, super cold water. And all I really wanted to do was um, fly underneath the surface. And so I got certified on my 12th birthday. So cute. Uh, it was, it was so, so cool. fun. And um, since then, I've had some um, additional trainings. I did an ROP class in high school as a senior where I got to go to a different high school and get some more scuba training. What's uh, so, ROP? Yeah, what is that? ROP. Um, I think, what does it stand for? It's like... Um, it's like an extracurricular mm-hmm. class. Okay. It allowed me to get a, a pathway cord in awesome. high school. Oh, so that's a thing. Cool. So I got a marine biology pathway cord. Mm-hmm. And um, so then I went to school. I went to school at Cal State Long Beach. Mm-hmm. I got my degree in marine biology, my bachelor of science. And um, all the while, I, I mean, really, I started working here when I was 20. And mm-hmm. so all of my previous dive training um, kind of came in my teen years. Uh, and then... Um, all of the more additional training that I've gotten, like dive master and instructor, has been while been while I've been here at the aquarium. Mm-hmm. So, um, my experience uh, it, diving for a long time, as well as I was a junior lifeguard, so I spent a lot of time in the ocean mm-hmm. before, um, really helped me get the job, the initial administration job here for the dive program. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've been growing and crawling up the ladder very slowly ever since. <laughs> Swimming up the ladder. Swimming up the ladder. Yeah, Swimming up the ladder. And you know, I was That's thinking so about a little cool. crab, like a little crab, you know, going up the ladder and then <laughs> a big wave comes and whew, we call that COVID. Yeah, Takes you down to the yeah. bottom rock, oh. right? No. Start all over <laughs> Start again. all over. It's funny that I was like, oh, real life mermaid. And you're like, I'm a little crab crawling up <laughs> the <laughs> That's I'm just bad. working my way up there. <laughs> I love that. Can you kind of give a rundown on – what is a dive master? What are kind of the levels that you have to go through to to get to where you are now? Okay, yeah, no, good, great question. So, um, uh, if you've never been scuba diving before, um, you can um, get yourself in the water in two ways. You can try something called like a discover dive, mm-hmm. where you go to a dive shop and say, hey, I want you to take me scuba diving. Um, I just want to get underwater in the ocean as quickly as I can. And they'll, do, they'll teach you how to do it, and you can do it one time. If you want to be able to do it yourself when you go on vacation somewhere else, it's like a, I know how to do this mm-hmm. and I want to do it here, then you would need a certification. Um, the first level is an open water diver certification. It takes about two to three weeks. There's some pool work. There's some ocean work. And you're going to get that done with a um, some with an instructor that's at a dive shop near you somewhere. Mm-hmm. And dive shops are everywhere. They're not only near the ocean. They're <laughs> definitely inland as well. So yeah. Just, really? Go- cool. Yeah. So just Google a dive shop. Um mm-hmm near you and there will be an instructor that can teach you something. So um, once you get your basic open water certification, that is by far the hardest part. Um, You also don't need to own your own gear in order to get that certification. Mm. You can rent the gear. Mm. I highly recommend it because not only is the gear expensive, storing it is even more expensive. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so it's kind of delicate too, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you don't really want to have to maintain it. You you don't want to buy your own gear until you love doing this and you're Mm -hmm. doing it every month. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and so um, so you rent the gear, get yourself open water certified, and if you do truly love it, um, there are tons of dive clubs that are just you know recreational people that want to go diving and figure out when they can all find a time to do it. And so that's how you find your dive buddies because you never want to go diving alone. Um, After that, there are a couple other levels. There's an advanced diver, uh, which uh, you do, I believe it's like five specialty dives where you do like a night diving or navigation Mm -hmm. or boat diving, just more specialty things that make you an advance. That usually takes about one weekend. Then you take another weekend and you can get your rescue diver certification, which teaches you not only how to rescue someone from the water, but more importantly, how to think so that you prevent a rescue from ever needing to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, a lot of just situational awareness training. Training. So that's a rescue diver certification. That is the certification that is required for all of our volunteer divers. So it's okay. technically the third level of certification. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so, yeah, but the first one always takes the most amount of time, energy and effort was the open water one. Mm-hmm. So um, after you get your rescue diver certification, you can become a professional level, level diver which means you'll become a what they call a dive master. Ooh, master. Yeah, dive master. You know, which isn't to be confused with master diver. Oh, that is confusing. Isn't that so darn confusing? <laughs> yeah. So a master diver is a certification. It's kind of like an advanced diver, okay. but even better. Okay. And so it's like someone who's like good at like researching and doing okay. this, doing that. 
a dive master is different because it's somebody that's overseeing other divers. Got it. You're seen as kind of like a leader. So that's mm-hmm. what we call when it, the dive world splits off into professional level diving versus mm-hmm. just recreational. Mas- a master scuba diver, which is more kind of recreational, who's mm-hmm. like got lots of skills. Okay. A dive master is someone that um, c- can oversee new students that aren't yet certified. And dive masters usually help instructors which is the next level, hmm. certifies students. So they're at the very mm-hmm. top level there um, mm-hmm. is the instructor. Is the instructor. Mm-hmm. Their assistant is usually a dive master. Dive masters are also responsible for taking certified divers into environments that they haven't been before. Mm-hmm. So let's say it's like a new dive site at, at Palau or something. Mm-hmm. You'd, hire, you'd want to hire a dive master mm-hmm. to take you because you've never been before. And that's just, we learned in our rescue class, not safe to do. Yeah, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that people don't always get that diving is this incredibly technical thing that mm-hmm. requires so much training and so much equipment. And although a lot of it, I'm sure, comes naturally to you now, there's a lot of work that goes into receiving your dive certification. And I remember I had to go through all of that when I was <laughs> getting hired at the aquarium. Uh, Pod Civic listeners, uh, I didn't actually have my dive certification when I applied, and I said that I did, and then they asked me for an interview, and I had to get it really fast. And I don't think even my boss knows that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's confession but time confession on, Pod Civic. on Pod Civic. Confessions but of the Pod Civic. I was very fortunate in that I had a very close friend of mine who was a dive instructor and was like, we'll get you, like, it'll be fine, just apply for the job, and if it comes up, we'll do it really fast. And so I was able to get my certification but it still took me a couple of weeks, and then just getting my like little certification card took a while, and they asked for a copy of it, and I was like, uh, um, just give me, a- <laughs> just give me. A- <laughs> I guess I have that date today, have it. yeah, <laughs> and definitely the date on it. I have said- been in the ocean before. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone who is wondering, I actually got certified specifically for this job. And if you work at the aquarium, you actually have to have at least an open water certification, right? Yeah. If you work with animals or you're working in the animals. No, you need it it. too. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. How did I get this job? You are open water certified now. I am. I'm getting there. I'm close. You're working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm really excited. She's doing great. That's Thanks. awesome. Are you helping her with it? You know, I saw her. I didn't actually do any of the instructing mm-hmm. or dive mastering. I was just a oh, I was a bystander watching, and she's an all star. You can wow. really tell. There's some Madeline. people that are meant Thanks. to scuba dive, yeah. and some people that are just better on land. I am I mean, a water sign. I yes. am a better on land person, <laughs> but it was required for this job. So <laughs> I am like a little recently morphed tadpole to frog, where I'm just like I don't not understand what's. No, I'm not a crab. <laughs> Rachel's a crab climbing up the ladder. <laughs> I am the useless. Half Half frog, half tadpole that's still figuring Somewhere out. Somewhere in so. between. Yeah. You're, you're just like, am I land? Am I water? You're I don't really know. know. You're in the middle of your evolution. Yeah. yeah. I'm working yeah. on it. Don't worry about it. But um, yeah, so I mean, it takes a lot of work to get certified for diving, and it definitely can be really dangerous, too. Like, what aspects of your job sort of involve safety or dive safety officer? What does that mean in terms of keeping everyone safe? A lot of people, when they look at the aquarium, they think that it's just one big pool. Mm-hmm. How dangerous could it possibly be diving in a pool? I mean, in the ocean, obviously, it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. But even when you're training, you go into a pool. Mm-hmm. Well, first, I like to correct people and tell them, imagine it's more of a jacuzzi instead of a pool because there are so many darn jets that are pumping <laughs> water down mm-hmm. there that you're getting pushed from one side of the exhibit to the other. So it feels a little bit more like diving in a jacuzzi. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, glass structures. There's overhead environment. There's yeah, acrylic glass mm-hmm. that's easily, easily scratched mm-hmm. by our um, scuba tanks. There's some overhead environments. There are animals that are be- that behave uniquely because mm-hmm. they are, um, unique. you know, here. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're yeah, unique. They're unique, animals, yeah. <laughs> they're mm-hmm. unique mm-hmm. and they are not scared of you mm-hmm. when you're the one yeah. who's been feeding them for the past, you know, several mm-hmm. years. And um, so all of that, you know, really comes into play. It's because a lot of what we're doing isn't just hanging out in the water waving mm-hmm. at people. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, nine times out of ten, we have a plethora of tasks that we're doing that we're thinking about. Um, our number one most important task being to make sure that we're checking on our buddy the entire time that we're diving here. Um, you know, our average age of dive volunteer is over the age of 40. And so, and they're underwater quite a bit. I mean, mm-hmm. last year we, uh, um, oh no, pre-pandemic, we we were logging over 20,000 dives a year. Wow. wow. And so if you think about that, the sheer amount of time people are underwater and doing hard tasks like cleaning and feeding and watching their buddy and mm-hmm. kicking around against the current. Um, there's just a lot of 
little things that when added together could create a big problem. Mm -hmm. And so it's my job to make sure that those little things are managed effectively. We can't prevent all potential dangers from happening, Mm -hmm. you know, but we can see how they add up we can have like super situational global awareness um and see just what are all the little aspects that can make something go wrong Mm -hmm. on a dive Mm -hmm. even down to you know is someone a bit congested today you know when i'm talking to one of the dive volunteers Mm -hmm. do they sound congested does that mean that one of them is going to blow their eardrum because they're not being able to clear their ears underwater Mm because of the pressure maybe that's part of the safety you know and that's safety even right there so it's it's being aware of the things we know that are happening Things that might not be a big deal, but are little. But it's all of those kind of little things that create a big problem that we try to figure out how we can nip in the butt. Yeah. Our um, dive program seems extremely well organized. And on the back of every exhibit that is approved for diving, there's a dive plan that says, hey, these are the approved dive plans for this exhibit. And it is very specific. And it is for every single exhibit that is Mm -hmm. divable. And I just saw our new DSO checking out all of those dive plans the other day and getting familiar with them because there is so much that goes into keeping things organized and safe and making sure people are doing the things that they're supposed to. And so I can't imagine how much thought and structure Mm -hmm. goes into creating something like that so yeah. thank you yeah <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's got to be so much work and so much you know mental checklists that you're constantly keeping track of so there's over i think there's over 50 exhibits that we dive in wow. and so um and well you'll see the dive officers we're constantly walking around looking at things people laugh at me they say you know a lot of people laugh and say that i'm always staring at a wall they're like i never know what you're looking at just your hands are on your hips and you're staring, staring at the at wall walls. just what are you thinking about mm-hmm. and a most of the time I'm thinking about how would I rescue, how would I would get someone out of this situation mm-hmm. if they needed it to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if just for some reason today was that person's day that they needed help, how would I get them out of this exhibit? How would I get them up onto that rock? I, I like that you said that because I will say, like, you are a very, um, like, outgoing personality, very extroverted. I see you around the aquarium. You're always willing to chat. But there are sometimes I see you very, like, hyper-focused. And I see you, like, Staring at a definitely. wall. And I'll be like, hey, Rachel. And you'll be like, hey. And, like, <laughs> like you're Hi. you're in it. And that's that's your job, you mm-hmm. know, is it's doing that mental work and, like, making sure, like, you know, I have to look at this exhibit and, and consider all opportunities right. and all, you know, all ways that yeah. you know, anything could happen and how would we respond to that. Yeah, yeah. Like, even the other day you were – um. I was recording our TikTok <laughs> in the drop tunnel. So, you know, just looking ridiculous. And Rachel comes in and she's and she's trying to get the attention of one of the divers. And there's, you know, a communication back and forth that yes. you guys have. You have hand signals. You have, you know, things that you need to get done in the exhibit. They're trying to communicate, you know, on dry land versus. So, like, it's very focused. And it's and it's got to be. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's funny you say that because that's where my extrovertedness really comes out is when I'm trying to communicate to a diver behind the glass. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, trying to get their attention, first of all, you know you don't want to slam on you don't want to pound on the yeah, glass no. you don't really hear it anyway once you're in there yeah. like unless your head is right next to the glass you really don't hear anything um and so trying to do jumping jacks or whatever or, <laughs> you know whip my blonde hair around <laughs> just to be kind of confusing i have since stopped doing so much of that because i have learned in my job how to be better at being patient and just telling them the information mm-hmm. that they need them to know mm-hmm. later mm-hmm. that's a big learning curve for me sure. is that they don't need to know everything right now let's yeah. just talk about it next time <laughs> so but yeah mm-hmm. talking to them and getting their getting their attention by doing the jumping jacks and trying to <laughs> figure out some kind of hand signal to tell them please don't clean that one coral yeah. I want the coral that's two two inches away from it clean <laughs> yeah. not that one and so how to how to find the hand signals to communicate that yeah. can be kind of challenging absolutely <laughs> well there's a lot of exhibits here and there's a lot of divers and volunteer divers but for you what exhibits have you dived in and out of all of our exhibits what's your favorite I've done most of the exhibits. I actually haven't done all of them. That oh, has really? always been something on my list. Like Which dive one? every missing? single. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Surge West channel. The Surge hey. West. Surge East. What? Surge East. Surge East. Surge East is done. Yeah. But the Surge West. The one, the far one in the Surge. And that's mm-hmm. the one that I'm always staring at thinking, how was I get anybody out of that one? Have you been it's- in Hellbenders? Because that one needs to be dove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's not only like three feet deep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a stand up. Right, it's the situation. Other one. <laughs> oh gosh, no! I'm excited to get in. I'm really excited to get in some of the new exhibits. Oh yeah, that are going to be opening in the Southern California Baja Gallery. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait seeing some of those behind the scenes.
wins, I'm just like, get me in there. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> excited. Really cool. mm-hmm. Yeah. On an upcoming episode, we're going to talk about our new gallery. I'm really excited to, oh, to dive in. I just spent <laughs> like half an hour to an hour this morning helping put sand in one of our new eelgrass tanks. Oh, yeah. Really cool tank. So that'll be really fun to see. And I'm sure it'll be fun to dive because it's so long that long you and flat. Kind of swim. Yeah. I know. It'd be, it'd be nice. great. <laughs> um, let's see. What other ones have I not been in? Um, I can tell you probably my least favorite one is unfortunately probably the penguins just because mm. the, the smell lingers if you don't <laughs> if you don't wear a full face mask and it's the wrong time of year, you get that water up your nose and yeah. you smell penguin for the next two days. Yeah. And when I they're molting too. That's, that's what I'm probably talking about. the time of year which is about to happen. We yeah. talked a little bit about that in the penguin episode. But... Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so but I really gotta are... not dive in there then. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna happen. They soon. get real stinky real yeah. quick because they're not going in the water very often. Yeah, yeah like, they get not... stinky. Yeah. They but but the water gets stinky, yeah. apparently. So that yeah. that that scent has stuck with me for <laughs> a while just because I couldn't figure out how to get it out of my nasal cavity. <laughs> Have um, you been in there since we redid that exhibit? No. Oh, okay. No, I, I haven't mean, actually been I, underwater yet. I think they made some modifications to make it more dive friendly. Like, they did. Specifically. Less and stinky. I, yeah. <laughs> maybe no, not. Maybe same not. amount of stinky. <laughs> same amount of stinky. <laughs> less slippery. But the yeah. idea mm-hmm. of like, you know, when we're redesigning an exhibit, how can we incorporate things that make it safer for people who have right. to get in and out of the water? And I actually loved that that was a pretty big consideration when they were doing it. <laughs> it's huge. It's yeah. such mm-hmm. a big deal, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, probably penguins is my least favorite, but my <laughs> my most favorite, which, you know, but that, I, the penguins are cute. I wish they would come up to me and love yeah, on me a little bit more. Yeah, they just stay away. I think but that they makes stay it less away. Fun. And so, therefore, I feel like there's, I feel like I'm the stinky one <laughs> instead of them being the stinky one. So, I don't get any loving and I leave stinky. It's just, it's, it's, it's a lose-lose for me. You're like, there's me. penguins 30 feet away from me, and I smell terrible. <laughs> this is not, this this is not this ideal. Is not ideal. That's so funny. So my favorite one um, has got to be Blue Cavern, though, because, nice. I mean, diving inside a building, diving in a two-story exhibit mm-hmm. inside yeah. a building mm-hmm. is pretty awesome because – uh, you know, it's funny. You said earlier that, you know, people are like, oh, you're like a real life mermaid. And I consider myself a water fairy because. OK, I'm sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> no. And I like to say this because for me, the reason why I love scuba diving so much is because it reminds me of I feel like I'm flying. Mm-hmm. It's a pseudo flying yeah. sensation mm-hmm. for me. You're like way up there. In Blue right. Cavern too. Exactly. And so sometimes so I'm actually not really a big like hiker because I'll go somewhere beautiful and I'll see a beautiful tree. And I just really want to go up and look at that leaf that's at the very top. Mm-hmm. And I can't <laughs> yeah. because. I'm above water and not mm. under it, mm. and it's super disappointing. Definitely changes how you like take in nature. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> when I get cool. to go into Blue Cavern, and I'm first on the bottom of the exhibit, talk to the kids on the bottom, and then just a little push and a kick, mm-hmm. and now I'm at the bridge, and I get to like wave at the people that are on the bridge. Like I actually feel like I am midair in the middle of oh, the Great that's Hall. So cool, and that's a feeling that like the little five-year-old in me just <laughs> loves. And so that's, so I mean, that's tired. my favorite part of the job mm-hmm. is that feeling that I get that's when awesome. I'm so cool. Yeah. I'm surprised your one of your favorite exhibits to dive in is one that's relatively chillier than a lot of our other exhibits because that's a cold water habitat. It is. Right? It, is. <laughs> it is. Well, it's not the coldest. It's that's, not the coldest. That's why I said I don't go into surge. Surge mm-hmm. is like in like it's the 48, cold. right? Yeah. 48 mm-hmm. or 50. But um, Blue Cameron's about four, 50, between like 56 to 60. It usually fluctuates throughout the year. Chilly. It is chilly. It it. <laughs> mimics what's actually happening in the open ocean mm-hmm. uh, right off our coast here. Yeah. Um, but it is, but it's easier to acclimate in that, mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. 58 than I'd say than a Catalina, than a 58 actually out in Catalina mm-hmm. because the circular, for some reason it's just, it doesn't stay so cold so long. Mm-hmm. But I can say that like there have been times where I've had to be a safety diver for some like event dive mm-hmm. where they were in the water for like, an hour mm-hmm. or like neighbors. The Blue Cavern exhibit is based off of a Blue Cavern dive site, right? And you said that's at Catalina? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And have you been there? Have you seen it? Yes. Yeah. How I got does to... it compare? <laughs> it's, you know, the blue diving Blue Cavern in, uh, in Catalina. So um, the blue ca- the real Blue Cavern dive site in Catalina is on the side that's facing the mainland. Okay. And it's near the Isthmus, which is the skinny, skinny low part of the island. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you're on the beach here like in LA and you're looking that way it's going to be like on very much like basically a hair to the left side of the skinny little isthmus part that's basically where Blue Cavern mm-hmm. is so you can look at it from the shore um it is um 
it's a pretty deep dive, the cavern itself. And so you go down, I think you go down about like 85 to 90 feet. Oh, wow. Um, all the way down. So it gets pretty like cold and dark mm-hmm. down there. And when you're in California, 90 feet in, you know, in Fiji feels like it could be 10 feet. Yeah. But 90 feet here in California is feels like 900 feet. Yeah. Um, so you get down 90 feet and there's this big hole in the rock. It's probably about the size of this this room it's a few car length if, if you stack maybe four cars on top of each other they okay. probably fit fit inside okay. and it's just like this big hole and you mm-hmm. get to go and swim into this hole and it's creepy and there's nothing really in there except for like <laughs> gorgonians and st- except for like these big sea fans mm-hmm. and stuff cool. um blow your bubbles and come on right out mm-hmm. yeah um which actually does mimic what the real blue cavern which which looks pardon me our our exhibit looks like mm-hmm. kind of so if you're looking at our exhibit in the far left corner it looks like there's this dark hole mm-hmm. and that is kind of what the dark hole kind of looks like in blue cavern my favorite part though about that dive in the open ocean though is because you and usually the group that you're with are in this hole for so long you're blowing bubbles blowing bubbles blowing bubbles well, those bubbles get trapped up in this mm. hole, mm-hmm. which is about 80 feet underwater. The cool part is that once you're done diving deep and you're going to finish your dive a little bit shallower, you come up on top of where this rocky hole was. And all of those bubbles that you had just blown out are now trying to find their way to the surface. Mm-hmm. So they find their way through tiny little cracks. Mm. And when you come up to do the rest of your dive in the shallow, sunnier, beautiful, you know, where there's all this kelp and sun and beautiful things, there's also a whole bunch of tiny little champagne bubbles Aww, that are coming so up that are nice. sparkling. And it feels like you're just diving through pixie dust. <laughs> that is so cool. And that magic. that's what really makes the, the Blue Cavern dive mm-hmm. magical, in my opinion. That's so cool. That's amazing. <laughs> Okay, well, you talked a little bit about, you know, you're getting into habitats here, our entire dive team, including our volunteers. You're getting into habitats there. You're not just swimming. You're not just getting in there for funsies and, you know, yeah. just hanging out. What are you guys doing in there? What What does a typical dive look like? So we do a, a few different things. Um, one of our big things that we do is so we do like four things. First thing is cleaning. Mm-hmm. We are constantly cleaning the exhibits. People ask, like, oh, how often do you have to go in and clean algae? Every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every day. Mm-hmm. If we can get in there every day, I call it the war on algae because it will never end. <laughs> and um, so we're constantly They're cleaning. Winning. <laughs> They're winning. <laughs> They're definitely winning, especially now it's summertime. Yep. Whew, they have. Mm-hmm. Restocked. Yeah, so, um, yes, it definitely. So, uh, on the exhibits that get more sun during mm-hmm. the summertime, those get need to be cleaned twice as often. Um, and we use um, hand scrubbing brushes, electric hand scrubbing brushes. We have also big power washer powered scrubbing brushes, which are super heavy and hardcore. Um, so we we do lots lots of scrubbing all the time. Um, we also have even some like smaller brushes for like the nuts and crannies. We have to clean the windows constantly. Um, every single day, truthfully. And then um, another thing that we do is feed the animals. So in a lot of our, so in a few of our exhibits, especially our big ones, our Tropical Reef and Blue Cavern, we hand feed the animals. <laughs> They're so spoiled. They're so spoiled. Yeah, we just like feed with on like a silver platter. Mm-hmm. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> basically though, but truthfully, if we were to just throw all of the food at the surface of the water and let the animals come in and get it, some of our animals wouldn't get any food because mm-hmm. just our faster, smaller, more agile animals will come up and get all the food. And truthfully, the bigger animals, like the grouper, wouldn't probably wind up getting a piece because they're just not very fast. Mm-hmm. That's not they don't get their food from the surface of the water in the yeah. open ocean. Mm-hmm. So they'll just let their friends get this food from the surface of the ocean and they'll just get their friend later. So in order to <laughs> prevent that from happening, we have divers that get in the water and hand feed those bigger, slower animals. Mm-hmm. And we make sure that they get the appropriate amount of food. We document how many pieces that they got. If, if they had a specific type of medication that's put into a specific fish that they need to eat, mm-hmm. we note that as well. Um, so feeding happens every day here as well, whether it's in a couple different exhibits. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the second thing we do. Third thing we do is um, some of us do presentations mm-hmm. underwater. So we do talk to our guests using an underwater full face mask and mm-hmm. communication systems, um, giving underwater presentations for the Blue Cavern and Trop Reef. And then lastly, but probably our most important job that people don't know about is to be the general observers of the exhibit. Mm-hmm. So um, even these big exhibits that have thousands of fish in them only have maybe two people that are really the aquarists that are in charge of that exhibit. Mm-hmm. So as, you know, 90 volunteer divers that are coming in every single week, they serve as 90 pairs of eyes 
for to see if things are quote unquote not normal. Mm-hmm. And so um, it takes a while for those volunteers to know what normal looks like. Mm-hmm. It's usually pretty funky. Um, <laughs> like, but you normal? know, I don't know how many people, you know, <laughs> I, I like to ask people how many people have a dog? How many people mm-hmm. have a normal dog? <laughs> no <laughs> you one. Know? Zero. Or no, a normal cat. You know, yeah. you need to spend, In this room, zero. Exactly. <laughs> Speak for us. <laughs> <laughs> you need to spend enough time with the animal to know what normal is yeah. so when mm-hmm. they stop doing that one super weird thing that they always do <laughs> you know that that's not normal mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. the fish are the exact same way mm-hmm. they have so much personality individually different animals of the same exact species behave very differently mm-hmm. um you would i never knew i grew up with a fish tank forever but i never really knew how much a fish is like your your cat mm-hmm. or oh, your yeah. dog yeah. or your or bird or something, mm-hmm. hardcore personalities. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> knowing what normal looks like and documenting that, mm-hmm. if we see something that appears to be off, because once it becomes obvious that something's off, say if like an animal's changing color or something mm-hmm. or isn't happy or it's just if it's if it's very obvious, then usually it's 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 bad news. So yeah. we try to find it when it's not so obvious, which is usually yeah. behavioral change. So your the dive team is so a part of our husbandry team as well. You guys are so intertwined because Mm -hmm. you are observing the animals from right in their face, right Mm -hmm. underwater. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's really fascinating too, getting to see like an exhibit like Tropical Reef where there's over a thousand animals. It's 350,000 gallons. It's our largest exhibit. There's some animals that are target trained and fed by our aquarists at the top. But at the same time, there's so much choreography underwater Mm -hmm. that you guys are doing scatter feeds and you guys are feeding individual animals, hand feeding like our stingrays under there. I just think it's so cool that, you know, we're all able to work together for the health and safety of our incredible animals. We call it coordinated chaos. (laughs) chaos. It's beautiful to watch, too. And you guys make it look you make it look so seamless. Like as you know, if you go to a dive show here at the aquarium, um, they happen daily in blue in our Honda Blue Cavern and Tropical Reef exhibits. Um, It is so seamless. And I know there's so much work that goes into it to make it seamless. And probably to you, like, if you only knew. (laughs) If you only knew. If you only knew. (laughs) But you guys make, you guys are so caring about the animals. And we're so lucky to have, you know, volunteers, people who volunteer their time to get in there and do hard work. It's not, it's like, like I said, they're not just in there swimming as much as fun as that would be. But those animals require constant care and constant cleaning. You know, some of the hardest work is really like, I love our mission statement Mm -hmm. so much to instill a sense of wonder, respect and stewardship for the Pacific Ocean, its Mm -hmm. inhabitants and ecosystems. And it's um, some of the hardest work for us is making sure is remembering that mission statement and making sure that we are teaching appropriate stewardship of our animals mm-hmm. and our environment. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing for um, us divers and um, what the aquarium of the Pacific believes in is teaching good stewardship. You know, um, that can come off a little, I have to explain that to mm-hmm. some volunteers because they might think that, you know, they're trying to convince one of the guests that this leopard shark isn't going to bite them. Mm-hmm. So um, they're in, 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 in that effort, they might try to pet the shark mm-hmm. or rub it on its belly or, mm-hmm. you know, do something that makes the shark seem less scary to mm-hmm. show the guest. Um, instead of trying to do things like that, we have to we have to not do those mm-hmm. things. We have to actually show the animal the respect that it deserves mm-hmm. and show the guests that that's not something that's appropriate to do. Mm-hmm. We can't. We want you to fall in love with the shark and not think it's scary, but we also don't want you hugging the shark yeah. because mm-hmm. we want you going and... to respect it. Exactly, yeah. you know? And so even when it comes to, like, how we are diving around the coral, mm-hmm. you know, we want to make sure that we're not putting our knees on the coral mm-hmm. or, you know, on the rock work or we're not grabbing a coral head when we're moving ourselves around. I mean, the secret is, secret info is in a lot of our diveable exhibits, all the coral is artificial. Mm-hmm. But we have to make sure that we're showing the guests mm-hmm. how would you normally behave if yeah. this wasn't artificial. Yeah. And again, in a jacuzzi, that can be really hard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Blowing yeah. around. That's something I've never considered before. Yeah, I've never gone to a dive show and seen you guys sitting on a piece of coral or, you know, kind of hanging <laughs> off of it. And, like, that would be probably very fun to do. But, yeah, you're right. It's stewardship. You don't want to show someone this is supposed to mimic an ocean, an open water right. ocean habitat. You wouldn't do that in the in the wild, so we wouldn't do that here. Right. People don't mm-hmm. watch other people in, in the ocean. People don't, yeah. you know, when you were watching all of our fun documentary videos these mm-hmm. days, you know, when you we were watching a video about Hawaii, you were usually not watching people snorkeling mm-hmm. or watching people diving 
in the water. And mm-hmm. so people don't know how they're supposed to interact mm-hmm. with the environment itself, not just the animals, just the environment itself. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's kind of an important thing that I have to, we have to remind our volunteers often is, you know, just, just to think about it from the perspective of our guests and some of our guest members that maybe don't have as much yeah. of a relationship with the yeah. ocean and are trying to find that relationship. So I think I love dive culture so much is about leaving things as they are or you know if there's trash picking it up and Mm -hmm. making things better for the ocean and it's so much about that sort of mutual respect that you have with the ocean and its inhabitants and ecosystems and just making sure you're not disrupting the processes that are going on that being said our animals here at the aquarium don't know that that's what you're doing and so do you ever end up with any weird animal interactions on their end (laughs) coming up to you oh yes oh yes (laughs) Oh, yes. Um, Please tell. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. Um, well, I You're can like, say today. today <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, today. Um, probably our, um, is our green sea turtle in our tropical reef exhibit. <laughs> is this copper? Is this, this copper? Is copper. Is Adam talked about over. him in the, future, in the past <laughs> He's episode. He's a celebrity already. Yeah, copper is a celebrity. Uh, he mm-hmm. really is. He's a yeah. troublemaker, right? He's got so much personality. <laughs> it's great. He likes to really get in our personal space mm-hmm. um, as mm-hmm. divers. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're usually when you see a turtle, you're like, oh, how cute. Cute. Let me be within ten feet of you. Mm-hmm. Let me let me just be near you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And now these guys, you'll be trying to put your fins on in the water, and this green sea turtle will He's come like, up. He's like, a human. Like, let me be near you. <laughs> just his face opens right in front of yours oh. in the in the water, and it's again, and it's tempting to not want to just hug him because he's right there. Of but course. again. Respectfully, mm-hmm. he needs to. He needs respectful of your yeah. space as well. He needs, yeah. he needs to practice some yes. stewardship Respect. with the humans as well. Yes. <laughs> He's really getting roasted on this podcast. I know. <laughs> I know. No, he. Lo- I swear, he just loves the attention. It's I so think cool. that that sort of leads us to one of our social media questions that we've had: Is do the animals ever go towards the entrance or exits of the water when you're diving in there because they know people come in and out of those spaces? Sounds like copper maybe does. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of the animals, when we're going in the water, they come towards us. The only one who <laughs> The only ones that don't um, are noticeably are the sharks. Mm. Sharks really don't want anything to do with this. I like to say that sharks, their behavior very much resembles a feral cat. (laughs) And I say that because there's lots of feral cats around here at the Mm -hmm. jetty at the aquarium. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, like when you see a feral cat and they just bolt. You you take one step towards it because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, kitty, yeah. and it's just gone. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Right? But then, like, two minutes later, you look to your left-hand side, and it's staring it's at you. It's been watching you the whole it's time. It's been staring mm-hmm. at you the whole yeah. time. And you're okay. like, wait, you were over there. What? How are you there? And then you take another step towards it, and then it's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that is very much, in my opinion, like, shark energy. Mm. Is like, <laughs> they are very curious, and they want to know what you're doing. So mm-hmm. they will be, they will hang out. But the second you start kind of showing any interest in them, they're They're out. Mm -mm. They're super out. Fascinating. So it's like that same kind of curious, strong energy as Mm. um, a little (laughs) Aristocat. I love that. We actually had another question about diving with sharks. We talked to Rachel Munson about, you know, diving with sharks inside of Shark Lagoon. And how, you know, that's something that people probably ask you a lot about. Like, do you dive with sharks? Isn't that terrifying? It's the most boring dive that we do. <laughs> I swear it is by far the most boring dive. We're all staying so far. Away all from of our you. dive volunteers are like, I want to dive Shark Lagoon. I want to get Shark Lagoon certified. I want to dive Shark And then they do. And they're like, that's like it's super boring. I'm like, I told you. It's the most boring dive that we do because they don't want nothing to do mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. And then we're in there and we have our sticks. We have like little yeah, sticks there. Just your shark bouncers. Just shark case. bouncers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Some sweet zebra sharks in there. They're just so kind of hanging out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fern's the cutest. Like, hey, Rachel. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. No, the shark lagoon tank is very, it's, it's really, really mellow. Um, we used to be able to hand feed the leopard sharks in Blue Cavern, Cute. which was fun. And we hand feed them because of the, their mouth shape is meant to crush, like it's like crushing plates. They're mm-hmm. not like serrated teeth. Mm. And so it's kind of like, because they eat like clams and stuff and their mouth is on the bottom of mm-hmm. their body. And so we would just like hold up a clam cupped Aww. in our hand and they would just like eat it out of our hand like kibble. Mm. That was super fun. <laughs> they, they really gave me some like puppy vibes. When they, did that. they do have kind of a puppy face. Too. Yeah, they, they do. Really do. Very cute. They, really they do. do. Um, I had another question about a specific animal that I hear a lot about. It's kind of famous. I want to talk about bubbles, <laughs> the batfish. Bubbles, the batfish. batfish. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Batfish are also called a golden spadefish. Mm-hmm. Um, bubbles is wonderful. He's got the most personality of all. And so, uh, so what happens is we get in the um, – so Bubbles has been there for at least – 
15 years, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. Um, and so he's been for a long time. And when divers are in the water and they're relatively relaxed in the big main window in their tropical reef exhibit, mm-hmm. um, this big spade fish will come over and start trying to eat the bubbles that you're exhaling. Mm-hmm. It's really cute. It's, it's really, really cute. cute. And if you haven't really given him a good, you know, purge of bubbles mm-hmm. in a while, he'll kind of start to like peck or like nip at your hairline <laughs> right which is usually which is covered by a hood mm-hmm. but he just kind of like pecks it. at the top like, and you can come feel on, it bubble bubble time it's bubble time he's like come on man yeah. come on. <laughs> and so um but it's really it, it's a really good sign though when mm-hmm. bubbles comes over a lot of times we'll have brand new divers that we're doing like an exhibit checkout for mm-hmm. and i know that someone is definitely passing when bubbles comes over and starts trying to eat their bubbles because it doesn't happen to new divers very often mm-hmm. because you have to be relaxed. Mm-hmm. It's like he can like feel whether you're. Those are the good yeah. bubbles. Those you're are the good bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> it's right. Those are the good bubbles. <laughs> and so then when a new diver is getting checked out, if bubbles comes over and you know mm. eats his bubbles, I'm like, okay, this guy's bubble relaxed. does his check off too. <laughs> yes, it. it's That's exactly what happens. <laughs> yeah, he just bubbles, goes over you. and checks it's the little so box. It's so cute. What's crazy is we have like I think like six bat fish, all yeah, of the same several. species, mm-hmm. and none of them do it except for him. That one fish bubbles. So he knows what he likes. I think it must have something to do with like it just feels good on his gills because the Bubbles go in his mouth and over his gills. I think people would be surprised to know about the kind of the personality of fish. You know, you don't think of fish as something really with a personality, but I, I've learned so much here about different animals. Are there any other fun stories that you've had about maybe fish in particular or, or any other animals inside of our habitats? Oh, gosh. Just um, stand out. You know, I think the eagle rays have been a big standout for mm-hmm. me. Um, They're big beautiful. in size and yeah. big in size. Big in yeah. size, mm-hmm. exactly, in both, mm-hmm. because they, um, they, came, they came to our aquarium. They were probably about maybe like a foot and a half in length. Mm-hmm. I remember when we first started feeding, we there was so a male small. and a female. Mm-hmm. And now they're how many feet? I think like six or eight. Like a hundred. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're they're, they're so big. Yeah, yeah. Like five or six mm-hmm. foot wingspan now. Mm-hmm. I know their tail is nine feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to see how quickly that ray has grown mm-hmm. in the past three years I guess yeah Yeah, Mm -hmm. I guess it has been that many years but Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know in the last several years Mm -hmm. and the fun part is we got to hand feed them for for a period Mm -hmm. of time and um, there was this like training behavior that they had to touch this purple cone before they were presented with the with the piece of clam Mm -hmm. which is interesting because I couldn't have like I couldn't show him the clam before he touched the cone like he has to touch the cone Mm -hmm. in order to get the clam so we called ourselves the human gumball machine (laughs) (laughs) Um, because you really had to think about yourself like Mm -hmm. like you don't get the gumball until you put you put the coin in and (laughs) turn the dial okay and so um the eagle rays were really a fun they were just from a personality aspect it was just kind of fun to watch this animal figure its grow up and figure itself out like in the same way that like a little kid is like learning how to run the correct Mm -hmm. way or learning how to put on his jacket in the right way or something or just even so much as like going down to tie your shoes but just the kind of fumbling that animals do Mm -hmm. as when they're younger when they're trying to figure out how they're going to grow into their size it was really interesting to see that in a ray, a fish, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you don't really, you don't see that so much in like insects or things that sure. you see that are mm-hmm. very much just in this innate instinct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, things that don't have a mothering period, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. e- like eagle rays don't have a mothering period. Mm-hmm. They're born, you ready know, to go. ready mm-hmm. to go. Figure right. Mm-hmm. But they still have to figure it out on their own. Yeah. They aren't like pre-programmed mm-hmm. to know yeah. how to do it. Mm-hmm. And so just to see that like juvenile learning state mm-hmm. develop mm-hmm. in that, it's normal of a cat and a dog. I wouldn't think anything of it a cat and yeah. a dog, but it was really special to see that in this cartilaginous mm-hmm. flat shark fish thing <laughs> with pretty spots. They are very pretty. They are very pretty. <laughs> so we were talking about our volunteer divers. Can you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah. So our volunteer dive program, um, it's, uh, it's it's super great. It's a big time commitment. Uh, it is one for one four to five hour shift every week for a minimum of one year um, for about 75% of the year. So uh, if you are a scuba diver and you want to come dive at the aquarium and you got some time, maybe you have like Wednesday afternoons, Mm -hmm. do you have Friday afternoons? How about Saturday mornings? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the day that you come in. And so you'll get assigned to a team that's, you come in every week on that same team. So I've got like a Friday, I got a Monday afternoon team that's all been here for many years mm-hmm. and they're all just like super good buddies and friends. Mm-hmm. And so um, you can, they come in every Monday for about 70% of the year and they just go diving. They do the underwater presentations. They do the underwater cleaning. 
feedings and the observations. And so they're basically doing everything here. Um, the a minimum age in order to do this is 18. Mm -hmm. So you do need to be 18. You do have to be a rescue diver. So I said earlier there was mm -hmm. the open water advanced rescue. So it's mm -hmm. the third level rescue diver. Um, you do need to have your first aid CPR and AED certification as well as your emergency O2, which is um, all usually things that you get when you get your rescue certification mm -hmm. as well. And you need to have um, 50 logged dives. Mm -hmm. So those are all the minimum requirements in order to um, apply for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly just because you're diving so much, we need you to be of a certain yeah. you know, safety level. Mm -hmm. And so um, then what you do is you apply online. If you do have those things, or at least at minimum, if you've got your rescue certification, 50 log dives, sign up. On, you can sign up online. Mm -hmm. You can go to aquariumvolunteers.org and check out the um, adult... Um, Check out the uh, uh, the adult volunteer opportunities, and the applications are open right now. They're mm -hmm. not open most mm -hmm. of the year, mm -hmm. and so they just opened on June first, and they're going to be open for a few months this summer. Cool. Nice. And so we are accepting dive volunteers right now, awesome. and um, eager to get some more people in. It's a lot of it's a lot of time. It's a lot of training. It's a lot of work. It's it's the most in demanding volunteer job yeah. I've ever heard of. Yeah, mm -hmm. but okay. it is also the most rewarding yeah they're yeah. always so happy when i see them around. they are <laughs> like say, the yeah. nicest people always and they're like i just got out of pin beds i'm going up for showers and i'm getting in blue cat you know like it's mm -hmm. always just mm -hmm. the most fun sounding day too and they're in the best moods yep and i think it's just they love being in the water so much yep. that it there's really a sense of community there too i think because i'll go up to the dive locker and there's a potluck happening and they're all like <laughs> around and they're all hanging out and like they're all i made fudge <laughs> or like i'll do okay. i'll be doing a behind the scenes tour and it's volunteer divers and i have you know guests with me and i'm like hi everybody these are our volunteer divers and everybody says hi everybody's like talking to my guests and just making them feel so welcomed in that space. Um, I just think it's so cool. So we got a really amazing group of volunteers. Yeah. It's really awesome. And they're so eager to talk about what they do. Like, they help so much with our marketing efforts. Um, and, you know, they're they're here on their own time. It's really special. Right. Some of them drive super far. Mm -hmm. Some of them have a commute of over two hours, two mm -hmm. or three hours to come every Once single week. week. Wow. Mm -hmm. Every week there and then back again. It's so awesome. Shout so. out to our all of our volunteers. Shout out. Shout out, out to our volunteers. Mm -hmm. So one of the social media questions that we got was, can you talk while underwater? And if not, how do you communicate with other divers while you're in the water? <laughs> Good question. Um, we can talk, um, but our talking is limited to only the person on the dry side of the tank with a microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we cannot talk to each other underwater, unfortunately. Um, so our, um, you know, Bluetooth actually does not work under, underwater either. And so, really? and you know, it doesn't, I believe that there's kind of this like rudimentary version of it with some kind of underwater comms. Mm -hmm. I think there's some more commercial diving aspects to do it, but we don't. Our communication line is a hard line that goes straight from the mask up to the surface. Mm -hmm. We wear a full face mask and there's a little microphone inside the oral mouth, nasal mouthpiece area. And so we hardline that to the top, and then we can talk to somebody on a microphone on the other side. Um, which is, it's pretty interesting because when we're trying to talk to that person on their side, we have to make sure that they're not asking us a question at the same time that we're taking an inhale mm. <laughs> because it's hear. loud. So much to think about. Mm -hmm. Breathing, breathing, <laughs> breathing is loud yeah. underwater, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so breathing out bubbles, it, taking the air into, you know, out from the tank in your body or blowing out the bubbles, it's loud. And so you have to kind of time your breathing mm -hmm. correctly <laughs> to when this person's going to be talking. Um, so that's why we don't do too much communicate that's why we don't do any communicating with each other underwater mm -hmm. um when it comes to trying to communicate with each other underwater we have hand signals um which are there most of them are just the generic dive industry hand signals mm -hmm. that you learn in your open water classes but sometimes we like to make up new ones that's kind of one of the fun parts of <laughs> diving is when you're planning your dive uh sitting back and be like okay so what are we going to be talking what are we going to need to talk about underwater mm -hmm. and therefore what are some hand size like what are some hand signs that we can do like for example, just this last week, uh, me and one of the Trop Reef Aquarius Celeste went, mm -hmm. uh, went in the exhibit to take some photos for a feeding training binder. Mm -hmm. And so she was, I was like her little model and she mm -hmm. had to take pictures of me. And I wasn't sure we, she was taking two shots. One was how the position is supposed to be mm -hmm. and one 
how the position is like not supposed no. to be yeah. like a no, like a yes a and a no, and a right? Don't. A yeah. do and a don't. Mm-hmm. There it is. And so we had hand signals for a do and a don't. Mm-hmm. And our like don't hand signal was like an upside down okay sign. Mm-hmm. And our like this is the this is the good shot was a was a, a the sign you do for money. Money. Because it's the money shot. Rubbing bills in between hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah running bills shot. between yes, fingers. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so that, that was the money shot. So that was the, the hand sign. That we, we just used it just for that dive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so when we were under there, though, when we were all done and we wrapped it all up, we all started making it rain, though. Yeah. <laughs> making it rain. That was a little we got the hand money sign. Shot. Let's make it rain. Money <laughs> shot, make it rain. That's, and so that's, that's kind of a new funny one. That's really fun. Um, but there's there's tons of there's There's tons of ones. There's a whole language of communication underwater with yes. your hands, right? Yes. I think the hardest barrier for entry for me was that I kept putting a thumbs up every time something. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. my regulator's working. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh-huh. And my friend who was teaching me to dive, like, yanked me out. Of, we were like three feet underwater. Yanked me out of the water and was like, stop <laughs> doing that. Don't that give means a thumbs go up. To the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. And so I like never did the okay sign. My dad always does an okay uh-huh. sign. And I just associate it with like my dorky dad. And I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. It's true. It's but then I true. had to change it from a thumbs up to an okay sign because if you do a thumbs up that means go to the surface which Uh is a very specific signal Uh I totally catch myself doing that too because I'll do photos with our our dive team (laughs) and when I get the shot I give a thumbs up and then like I'm like but I'm not no no no, don't listen to me with that yeah exactly you know if you're trying to tell a diver without telling them that that was like awesome Mm -hmm. or good or cool or yay Get, um, give them a hang ten sign. Ooh, okay, a shaka, well, shaka, okay. Like shaka, okay. shaka, right? Shaka. shaka. There we go. I, so cool. One of my favorite things um, to witness as an employee is the interactions between our divers and our guests. It's cute. They play rock paper scissors. They give high fives. They blow water bubble kisses. Yeah. It is so amazing. Can you talk about the interaction you've had with their guests? Oh gosh, that's so fun. Yeah, uh, we can see the guests just as well as they can see us. Mm-hmm. Which I think is fun. I mean, the glass I think is like between like five to nine inches thick, but um, we can see. We can't hear on mm-hmm. the other side of the glass too mm-hmm. much, but um, but we can definitely see it. And rock paper scissors is always so much fun. Mm-hmm. I think the most fun is seeing the look, not only just the look on the kids' faces, but the look on the adults' faces mm-hmm. and how similar in wonder they are. It is really. It's really mm-hmm. cool because, you it know, the adults old. get this just this charge of energy mm-hmm. sometimes and their eyes just light up when they look at you and they're so excited. But mm-hmm. they're genuinely excited for themselves, not just excited for their kids, yeah. for the kid to see the diver. And so that's that's a fun thing for me because and I've done some odd jobs in the years and, you know, being a princess character yeah. at, 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 at birthday parties yeah. was something I odd jobbed and let me tell you they are nev- no one has ever been more excited to see a scuba diver forget yeah. princesses, right. you, you know, yeah. forget princesses. Mm-hmm. it's all about the scuba divers and mm-hmm. so that's been really fun to see that kind of that wonder so excitement cool. amazement out of adults and kids mm-hmm. when you're when you're under there and so we can see you just as well um we love to do rock, paper, scissors. We like just like staring at the kids because mm-hmm. they're just staring mm-hmm. at us. Mm-hmm. Just like because you can see they're thinking like, are you a real person? Mm-hmm. Like, who are you? Do you actually see how me? Are you breathing? What are you like? Yeah. How are you breathing? They're just staring at you trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I just like to stare back just trying to figure them <laughs> out. Too. You That's know, so cool. I give some cross eyes a little yeah. bit. <laughs> or, you know, a lot of times I like to go upside down, um, so cool. which is mm-hmm. kind of fun, too. And so. Just, you know, just being animated, uh, having, I think having it's fun. It's so inspiring, too, because I think when you're a kid, you see that and you're like, oh, that's that's a person. That's a job. I can maybe do that. That's yes. something that I could maybe do one day. Maybe even an adult, too, just realizing, like, oh, you can do that. There's opportunities to do something like that. Right. It's it's, it's that wonder, right? Mm-hmm. That it's that instilling that sense of wonder. Like becoming right? an astronaut, you know, like yes. it's, it's you're seeing you're wearing a suit and you're in a space where gravity is kind of weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> Floating around. Yeah. Doing it's, what you gotta do. It's very much, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very much like watching yeah, like watching like a real life astronaut mm-hmm. do it. It's um you know, you almost wish so often you wish that you could just like pull them right into the water with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that that's the hard part. It's hard to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you usually down there it's always and... it's always hard to say goodbye. Yeah. You just want to stay down there and wave and high five and just like you really wish that you could just get to know these people mm-hmm. a little bit more when you're looking at them. <laughs> so I had five more minutes. Exactly. Five more minutes. <laughs> you know, I've one of my like dreams has always been, you know, because I just think about like random cool things. Wouldn't it be cool if we if we all had communication lines? And there is like a red mask and a blue mask and a yellow mask. And you could press mm-hmm. a button and talk to the red mask diver. 
or the blue mask are. I, these are these are all ra- these are Rachel fantasies. Cool <laughs> <laughs> Get on we that, Madeline. Make- <laughs> you know, I will do my best. You know, um, I don't know. Just if there is a way that I could just I don't know. Or sometimes I just wish that I could just like dry off real quick and run down yeah. and see everybody and do Go some talk. kind of meet. That was me in there. That was me. I'm a yeah. real person. Mm-hmm. You know, They're like no, that's not. One you. of the fun. One of the funniest things I've ever seen was when I was watching some divers and there was these um. There was um, a couple of um, little old ladies. There was conversation whether the divers are real or not. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm not sure. They, I, I think they're real. I don't, I'm not sure. And her friend was like, those are real people. Those are robots. And so certain. Yeah, so certain. <laughs> she convinced her friend, didn't just like think herself, completely convinced her friend mm-hmm. that she was ridiculous for thinking that they were real people. <laughs> the that they're definitely robots. That and we could afford 50 say, as a underwater <laughs> robots <laughs> that look and act just like real people and clean and do so all these things. Yeah, so like, technology well, that we right? have here. We are Thank killing you. it. <laughs> so many underwater robots. I, mean, I get that sometimes. Some people will comment on our TikToks and say, this sea lion CGI. No way does it look like that. Yeah. I'm like, you must think I'm I'm adding that to my resume. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm so talented that I can CGI. It's usually like the facial oh, expressions yeah. that they're trying to do like a smile or a tongue mm-hmm. and people are like that's fake and you're like why how would I have faked that that is right. <laughs> the world a we lot live of in, right? yeah, a right. lot of trust in my talent if you think but that. in a world where deep fakes and AI and all these things are happening stay suspicious I'm just gonna deep mm-hmm. fake um, a robot into Rachel and then <laughs> <laughs> it'll be very confusing <laughs> I, I just imagine I just have a vision of Rachel doing the robot in her scuba <gasps> and outfit. then make just, a TikTok about yes. it there we mm-hmm. go this There's can happen we this can happen underwater you should do the robot Mm -hmm. perfect amazing well I think that we have your next TikTok idea I think yeah so Um, speaking of TikToks Rachel has hosted some live TikToks while diving and they are so much fun to do but so many people going back to kind of like taking your breaths at the right time and everything there's so many people where I have to remind them in the comments or, or Rachel and I will be speaking while she's underwater and I'm in uh, an area above, I was going to say it's kind of like a closet that we that we huddle into, and yeah, I'm Madeline's on my I'm closet. on my laptop, my closet, my personal AOP closet, um, and I have to tell people like Rachel's fine, everybody, she's breathing underwater, so she's going to take moments where she's breathing and you hear it, and it kind of sounds like is she okay? Is ever is, is she all right? It's like yeah, she's doing great. I'm like Rachel, you doing good in there? She's like yep, doing great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those are really really fun to do. Yeah, I'll have to do one soon. Yeah, that was so much fun. One of the highlights of working here so far, actually, has been That's doing that TikTok live underwater, especially because that was the first time I had done an underwater presentation since before COVID. And so I was definitely out of breath. I, uh, it's I, a lot to talk <laughs> and dive at the same time and, and focus lot. on your breathing. It's and a they're lot. 40 minutes long minimum, so wow. yeah. the, those live streams. So. What a lot mm-hmm. of people don't understand, too, is that with diving, you're actually – you're actually like swimming with your breath. Mm -hmm. So by using your lung volume, I mean, your lung volume is a lot of air and Mm -hmm. a full breath of air can make you float and a without any can make you sink. And that's what we actually use to keep good buoyancy underwater while we're diving. And so to talk, you don't really have control over Mm -hmm. that. And so your buoyancy just kind of gets like all around. The grouper almost ate the GoPro. Yeah, that, oh yeah, I forgot about that. There, I'm going to put that in the show notes, too. There's a really fun video That's of the grouper good. just going for it. Yeah. He's like, this is the grouper. And here's it. It's just like you see the inside of his gill rakers. And I'm like, oop. Just, it was so cool. Like, that grouper is a paid actor. Like, we you all saw the inside of our grouper today. Yeah, it That's was fun awesome. for us. That's going to okay, charity. Our last question is, I think some people don't realize that fish have teeth. Mm-hmm. Or are capable of kind of nibbling? Mm-hmm. Does that happen ever? Yeah, the, uh, the nibblers of mm-hmm. the exhibits are usually the smallest, the smallest animals in the exhibits. <laughs> The small, um, and they're in quite a few of the exhibits up in the Tropical Reef. Um, they're the small black damselfish, mm-hmm. or I think they're called white spotted damsels. Mm-hmm. Um, they're maybe like the size of a base, like they're like the roundness of a baseball. They're super small, mm-hmm. and um, they are ter- territorial. They're kind of mm-hmm. like a Garibaldi, the same mm-hmm. kind of species of Garibaldi. So they're territorial of a certain area. Mm-hmm. So if like you are trying to scrub a rock, and you have your hand on another rock, which you're trying to like gain for le- just holding onto for leverage. Mm-hmm. They'll come over and they'll kind of like peck at your finger. That's my rock. That's my rock. And they kind of just like peck at your finger, which it doesn't hurt, mm-hmm. but man, it'll make you jump out of your Startle you, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. It yeah. is very mm-hmm. startling. It's very startling. <laughs> um, so those are the only ones that actually like will necessarily like 
eat you or try mm-hmm. to you know eat at you. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, we do all have to wear gloves and um, mm-hmm. hoods though because we mm-hmm. have to cover our fingertips and our e- our ears mm-hmm. as well because both of those if it, just a little bit of it is exposed it looks like a piece of clam and a lot of the animals Delicious. eat clam <laughs> and so um uh, but yeah they you know the. The only ever really nibble on you when you're feeding, like during mm-hmm. feeding time or if they're you've got... seeing it with food. You yeah. Know, oh, it's like, totally yeah, a food you, thing. I know you got food. It's mm-hmm. a food thing or a little bit of a, hey, that's my rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Get your own rock. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. Yeah. yeah that was really so important. I, I know I learned so much and I, I can't wait to get in the lottery. Aquarium of the Pacific is brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. In 2023, the aquarium celebrates 25 years of connecting millions of people worldwide to the beauty and wonder of our ocean planet. Head to aquariumofpacific.org to learn more about our 25th anniversary celebration. Keep up with the aquarium on social media at Aquarium Pacific on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. This podcast is produced by Aaron Lundy, Madeline Walden, and Scott Shaw. Our music is by Andrew Reitzma, and our podcast art is by Brandy Kenny. Special thanks to Cecile Fisher, Anissa Valles, and our audiovisual and education departments, and to all of our amazing podcast guests for taking time out of their day to talk about the important work that they do. Podcific wouldn't be possible without the support of the aquarium's donors, members, guests, and supporters. Thanks for listening. <laughs>